Imagine being on a first date with a man that is 42 years old. And one of his first questions that he's asking you to get to know you is, how was your prom night? What? What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Let's talk Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 4, Getting Intimate. If you're brand new to the channel or a returning subscriber or a returning viewer, I should say, that is not yet subscribed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you don't do anything at all, at the very least, thumbs up the video to let me know you stopped by. And then I know y'all are going to leave comments, so leave some comments down below. All right, let's, let's start. So it's the ladies' lounge. The ladies have the power this week, so one of the men is going to be sent home. I think we all knew even before watching the episode who that was going to be. But let's act surprised at the end anyways. So during the lounge, Tommy lets the ladies know that typically he has them explore intimacy with the gentleman later in the season, but he wants to get to it right away. So he wants the ladies to set up a date with the men either at their house. I said, what? Why would they, whatever Tommy, at their house, their job, or just their favorite spot? So... They just met these men, and Tommy thinks that these, these, th most of the men are weird, okay? Let's call a spade a spade. Most of the men are weird. Tommy thinks that these women are going to open up their house, their houses to the likes of Lamar. Who, honestly and truly, who would feel comfortable letting Lamar come into their house when all that man does is talk about sex? I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. How do I, I mean... I wouldn't feel comfortable, but okay, Tommy. So we then find out that because Glenn never showed up, that Tommy has replaced Glenn with Justin. Justin's cute. Justin's very cute. He seems very well-spoken. He seems like he's normal, okay, from what we can see so far. He's 34 years old, and he's a physical education teacher. So we get our first group date. It's Alexis' group date. So she is um, having Rashina, Lamar, Will, and William meet her at a gym. We know that she did she play collegiate basketball and she referees. So that's near and dear to her. They're all gonna play. So it looked like William can really play. He was out there three pointers and posting up. And I said, okay, William, them hips good for boxing out. I see you. So after that, everybody starts, you know, breaking off into little sections and conversing. So Rashina said that her relationships have always been three plus. Now she's talking to Lamar and Will's um, childish asses, right? Immature. So they're like three. She was like three years, three years. So they're both, I thought you was talking about threesomes. Why would she be saying that? Why would she come on and tell y'all off rip that she's used to having a throuple? I'm so sick of <laughs> whatever. He's he's gone. So whatever. I'm so sick of Lamar. So we'll ask Rashina if you have to pick between the two of us right now, pick one. Or is that Patrice? Was that Patrice, y'all? They favor to me. If it's not Rashina, I'm sorry. If it's not, if they if it's not Rashina, I'm sorry, but I thought it was Rashina. So she was like, neither one of y'all. I'm not feeling either one of y'all. Um, she's not attracted to them. She doesn't like the conversation. She's not with it. So she ain't with it, y'all. So Will is talking to Alexis. And he tells her that he's been married twice, but it was for the wrong reasons. And he starts talking about giving people grace and the room to make mistakes and all that type of stuff. Will, for the most part, William, excuse me, for the most part, from what we've seen, has the most mature conversations outside of chats, right? I think William has just had a bad shake. I mean, he might have some skeletons in the closet, but from what he is presenting to us on the show, he's presenting well. Hips be damned, you know? Back over, um, Alexis goes and sits down with Will and Lamar to talk intimacy, right? Will brings up, you have to have int intimacy with God first, 
than with another woman. Now, I am all for praising our Lord and Savior, right? I've said on my channel numerous times that I, about my religion, I believe, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, all that. But I thought it was weird the way that he phrased that. I get what he was trying to say, but it also seems if it, as if it wasn't natural and he was just trying to produce a good answer. But okay, Lamar, of course, starts to talk about sex. And what we're seeing with the women, none of the women like it, right? There is typically from the past, the seasons that I've seen of this show, there's always a man that is like hypersexual like that, that is very tunnel vision, wants to talk about sex. And whenever we have that person, there's always at least one lady that's entertained by it. None of these women like Lamar. Not a one of them. None of them like Lamar's line of questioning, right? So Alexis looked disgusted by it as she should have been because why are you talking about threesomes? Like how childish do you have to be to think that intimacy is just sex? But this is also the 42 year old that asked about somebody's prom, but you know. So we then have Rashina and Justin. Maybe, was that Patrice? Now I'm tripping y'all. I'm sorry, if it wasn't, Okay, Rashina and Justin. Justin got this waist leash stank. Hated it. Hated everything about it. It looks so stank to me. Ugh, oh my God. I feel like it was designed for women. Do you need to be that hands-free while you walk your dog? Like, seriously. But I guess. So they're meeting up so they can walk their dogs. And him and his waist leash which he proved how ineffective it is. His dog was all over the place. Now, the dog was being a dog, but I also feel like you need to have a leash. Get you a good grip on it. But um, it, I, I think it worked out in Justin's favor because it showed how he's able to remain cool under pressure, how he asserts control. Like, it was, in hindsight, it was a very good situation that happened for Justin and Rashina. So they sit down to talk because he done spilled his drink and everything. Had you had had a proper leash, <laughs> don't you don't you wear that waist leash again, especially with that big ass dog. He out here acting like he got like a little cocker spaniel or something. You got ain't that like he ain't like a husky, right? Your dog is too big for that waist leash. <laughs> I have never seen that before. Oh, my God. So they sit down to talk, and Rashina has two older kids by older. I think her kids may be in their teens. So she doesn't want any more kids, but she is open to having children. So it's not a hard no like Mika is. Rashina is more of a, I really don't want any more. But I think if she were to get married and her husband really wants a child, I think that she would compromise in that respect. He does not have any at 34. Justin doesn't have any. Um, and he said he's made peace with the fact that he just might not have any. He might be a winner for the guys because it seems that majority of these women already have kids and don't want more. And it seems like a good portion of these men don't have kids and want kids. So it's, I just kind of feel like the screening process, they didn't weigh things out correctly, but you know. So he tells her or tells us that he would like to go on more dates with her. They, they vibed. They, they got along. They vibed. Y'all know Rashina said that she likes uh, younger men anyways. So that works for her. So then we have Leilin meeting up with Tommy. So she said that she has a family emergency that's going on right now. And she is unsure on how she should manage this because she wants to give this her all, give this her undivided attention. But she has this family emergency that has popped up. Tommy asks if she wants to stay in the process. She says she does. So he gives her the week off to see if she can get her mind right or she can figure out how she's going to uh, juggle this, I guess. She doesn't say what the emergency is. I saw on Twitter some people was like she just don't like the men. I think she had an emergency. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. So then we have a, a group date at Ch uh, Chaz's house. Chaz, Alonzo, Vanessa, Rashina, and Justin. Why were they at Chaz's house? 
if the ladies are planning the dates, but I guess. So Alonzo comes in. He apologizes to Koshia. Um, she said that we were both fighting to be right. No, he was fighting to be right. Koshia, you were right. Choked or spanked is sexual. No matter how you try to spin it. The fact that she, I guess, girl, Koshia, Koshia just wants to be picked right? Remember she kept saying she wants, she's ready to be married. She just wants to be picked because by no means I have nothing, I have nothing against accepting an apology, but y'all were not both wrong in that situation. Alonzo was, but okay. Okay. Um, they're playing dominoes. They're playing, you know, it, they're having a good time after everybody leaves. Um, Alonzo, well, after before everybody leaves, Alonzo and Patrice. See, that's the thing. This was Patrice and not Rashina. I one of them got to get rid of that blonde hair. <laughs> Somebody got to get rid of the blonde hair. I'm gonna get it right, y'all. So this is Patrice because Patrice invited Justin, who just walked up in Chaz's house. Okay, um, Justin has a lot of personality too. Just a side note, but. Alonzo and Patrice plan a movie date because Alonzo wants her to watch a movie called The Warriors and they were joking about how they were going to do like a Zoom date but they're going to plan to watch the movie in person. I will say on this season we're seeing a lot of the people actively plan dates and say they're going to plan dates on camera. It seems to me like it's happening a lot more maybe not but I don't remember in past seasons like seeing people be this vocal about it that we're seeing on screen, which is good. So Chaz and Vanessa have some time together after everybody leaves. Um, she likes that he doesn't need constant reassurance. He said he's very secure in himself. You know, he knows who he is, knows what he wants. So he's cool with that. They're vibing. They're cute. I like it. I, I like them together so far. They're the only like real connection that we're seeing so far, so far. So then we have Maya and she has invited Lamar to where she is doing some filming, some content. She apparently has a waist trainer line. She must have like a fitness brand. That must be her brand. So he comes in, she's asking, does he have a type? And he was like, no, he doesn't have a type. All of the women that he's ever talked to, they've all looked very different. So she said that looks for her are not important. Like, you know, you should be aesthetically pleasing for sure. But she also said that she wants to be more attracted to your mental and your personality. Because you can be fine as ever, but if your personality is trash, then your personality is trash. Lamar is an example of that. Lamar is not a bad looking man right he's not a bad looking man I, I'll say he's handsome right he's a he's a good looking guy but the moment he opens his mouth it's like uh aside from that missing tooth aside from that just when he opens his mouth to speak you're gonna get turned off and this is why Lamar then said that physical is important though okay physical attraction is important he then mentioned some like it somehow goes to him talking about being in a situation with two women so now Maya's turned off he then asks her what is the freakiest thing you did in high school nigga what what I don't remember how old Maya is but Lamar is 42 he then asks her, how was her prom night? Did you lose your virginity at prom? I am 39 years old. I will be 40 into this year, right? I've been out of high school for 22 years. Which means that my prom was 22 years ago. Senior prom was 22 years ago for me, 2002. Down at the Renaissance. <laughs> That's that was the the theater. What's it called? The Renaissance Theater. I think that's what it was called where we had prom. In. I cannot imagine at my big age going on a date with a guy, and that is one of his first questions. Not only are you asking me when did I lose my virginity, which I think is wildly inappropriate on a first date, but why do you care what I did at prom? Did you, are you still going to prom? Like I would have so many questions. 
What's wrong with Lamar, y'all? Like, I get it. He was cast on here for, I guess, entertainment value, but it's falling flat. And what I will really, really love is for these shows to stop thinking that they have to hire somebody to come on here and make a fool out of themselves for our entertainment. This show would run just as smoothly if we didn't have Lamar making an ass out of himself every time he's on screen. Next, we have Mika, Maya, Jonathan, and Laron on the day. Laron, what was this little outfit? I didn't like it. Was he wearing, like, basketball shorts? I didn't like your outfit, Laron, your matching two-piece. I didn't care for it. Um, But I like Laron. I think Laron is cute. Laron seems like he has a good personality. Laron just has to stop telling people he needs a reason to get out the club. I think if he would stop that, that portion of his spiel, I think he would, you know, move a little better with the ladies so Mika finds out that Jonathan was married before Jonathan was like I never said I had a baby mama and Mika is like but you never said it was your wife either which is true so they separate let's do Laron and Maya first they're having a really good conversation they both want to be power couples and be very equally yoked they're both feeling each other the conversation's flowing um, they have a nice little vibe. So I, and I think they look cute together. So I like, I would prefer Laron with Maya over Koshia. I, I would. So then we have Jonathan and Mika. So he wants a woman that is willing to compromise and will accept him for him. She wants a man that's going to communicate his true feelings. Both are valid, valid, valid things they're looking for. He then tells her that he wants to get to know her and not her history. This is my thing with Jonathan. We are going through this once again. Jonathan comes into these dates with the women and will ask them about their past relationships. But the moment somebody asks him, he's visibly irritated by it. What happened in that marriage? You know what I mean? So he says in his confessional, he did not mention it because he wants to protect himself. By it, I mean he didn't mention um, having an ex-wife. He said because women are skeptical about talking to men that are divorced. Let's time out. That might be true. Okay? That might be true. Would I talk to a man that has been divorced? I feel like, yes, at the age we are now, hell, it's going to happen. I have friends that are divorced. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to happen. But I kind of feel like that's not something that you, just that you, like, purposely hide. You know what I mean? Because give me the opportunity to react. However I react to it lets you know if I'm the right person for you anyways. But I don't want to be out on a date with somebody, especially if I've asked you about your previous relationships, and then I find out three months from now that that last relationship that you were talking about is your ex-wife. You know what I mean? I just... I, I don't, I, I guess she tells him that he needs to be more intentional about his conversation because people interpret things differently because Mika is sitting at that table now wondering if he has a baby mama and the ex-wife or is the ex-wife the mother of his son. You see what I'm saying? I kind of feel like everybody else is saying they've been divorced. Why are you picking and choosing who you tell? What was it about Mika that you didn't want to tell her, but you clearly tell Maya? You see what I'm saying? So does that mean that you really liked Mika more and wanted to protect yourself that way? You didn't really see her for Maya? Oops. I would love to know his reasoning for how he decided which women he wanted to tell. So we then get to the ladies lounge. This episode went like kind of fast. I feel like they're they're smashing in. Oh, Jesus. I feel like they're smashing in too many dates in the one episode and they're going to rapid fire. But 
Okay, so we're at the ladies' lounge. Leilin tells us that she is leaving the process. The ladies say their goodbye. So they're talking about who they all like. We never care about that this early. We want to know who we're getting rid of. So the ladies collectively <laughs> don't like Lamar. They don't like his sexual conversation. Mika does not like Jonathan. She thinks that Jonathan is like kind of full of red flags. Koshia says that she does not like, well, actually, then, then the ladies start talking about Will. Damn it, y'all, Rashina or Patrice, whichever one it was, because now I'm second guessing everywhere I wrote down their names, um, said that they were out talking to Will, and he was, I guess, staging a house, but said he had to go back to his apartment, and I guess he doesn't have a bed or doesn't have a place to stay, but she was saying that he was going to sleep on the floor, and all the ladies was like, oh, and I did too. You don't have no place to, I actually don't believe that personally. I don't believe that. Cause if this man, he got in my comments and said that he, um, is a real estate developer. I, I should hope that he has at the very least the air mattress, but I don't think he's sleeping on the floor personally. That's just me. So Koshia said that Alexis, she doesn't like Will because Alexis has shared private conversations that the ladies have had with each other in confidence with Will. So Alexis is pillow talking. And I said, girl, what? Already? It's like the second week. What are you pillow talking about already? So Alexis is like, Koisha. I said, shit. So Koisha, my name is Koisha and you go and get it right. Now, I have a name that gets mispronounced constantly, okay? Um, I have a, ma a name that gets, and I'm not talking Tammy. So, my name is Tamara. I get Tamara, Tamara. I've heard Tamira. I've heard tomorrow. <laughs> so, I get called everything but Tamara. You are going to have to correct people on, the, on your name, right? I have some friends who whose names I have never heard anywhere else before, right? I swear their names are one of a kind. So in those respects, they have to just correct people. And I just kind of feel like tensions were high, emotions were high. Girl, we all been saying your name wrong. I have no problem with Koshia correcting her, but you didn't have to yell it out, okay? Now, did Alexis mispronounce her name on purpose? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she did. So she, um, Alexis says that Koshia has an issue with all of the men. She said that she's always saying that the men are talking to her crazy or talking to her sexually. It's not just Koshia that's saying that we've seen a lot of the men be like low key inappropriate this season. So she, Alexis is saying that none of the men come at me sideways because they know who to play with. Girl, what? Alexis then said that she told Will to control his own narrative and not come across as a pervert. I said, well, damn. So then Mika is like, nobody called him a pervert. That was you. So what it seems like is that Alexis put 20 on 10 to try to peg down the women in regards to Will so that she could basically win the man. That's what it seemed like. So she was like, I'm going to go and tell him that all these women have been talking mess about him so that, you know, he'll feel like he can really trust me and we can build our bond that way. And I just kind of feel like, girl, it's giving pick me. You're not a girl's girl. It's giving desperate. It's giving thirsty. It's tacky. It's tacky. So next thing you know, Koshia and Alexis are going back and forth. Koshia tells her that she has the body of a 12-year-old, and that's why the men ain't checking for her sexually. And I said, well, well, goddamn. <laughs> I kind of feel like you walked into that. Koshia has body. Like, everybody has been saying it, right? Koshia and Mika. And I guess Maya, Maya with her waist trainers. Like when the men are talking about those three women, they're talking about their bodies. Alexis, nobody is talking about your body since you might be built like a 12 year old. I mean, Jesus, what a read, right? So then it turns into Koshia saying she'll slap the shit out of her, but then she runs out crying. And I'm like, what are you crying for? You won the argument. But she runs out crying. Mika and Rashina slash Patrice. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so mad that I think I have them mixed up all throughout my notes. But one of them, one of the blondes, okay, they run out after her. She comes back and said that, you know, she had to run out because she's an ugly crier. Girl, sit down. Sit down, Tequila 2.0. You are acting like Tequila unnecessarily. Like verbatim, sis. Sheesh. So the ladies are able to calm themselves down, okay? And then we're off to the, the final dates. So Alexis takes out Will. Alexis tells Will that the ladies feel that he has lustful energy and he sleeps on the floor. <laughs> She did not have to add the sleeps on the floor part, but she said that they are questioning his stability because of that. The ladies are not questioning his stability because of that. One of the ladies is questioning his stability. Um, So Will is mad. He said, I ain't never slept on the floor. So that's crazy. I would be mad about that too. Okay. Especially if... <laughs> I would be mad too. So he's upset about the narrative that's being put out about him. He has every right to be upset about this narrative that he laying his ass on the floor. Okay. So Alexis is immediately like, I fought for you. Pick me, pick me. I fought for you. I avenged you. I was there for you. I was ready to fight for you. Will watch them not even end up together, but okay, sis. Um, she tells him that you're still ready to love. Will is pissed now. So Will said that it, wait till he sees the ladies, he's going to make them look stupid and war is on his mind. Sir, what? Not war. <laughs> Not war. I kind of feel like we'll find out. Run back. Remember who you talked about or who you talked to that night that you might have insinuated that you were going to sleep on the floor. Not saying that you did, but that you insinuated that. Check her, but don't come in and be rah-rah with all the women. That's not the way to approach that. Just find out who you had that conversation with and see why that's what she took from the conversation. Okay. So then we have Koshia and Lamar. So Lamar comes into this and it's like, Koshia invited me out. Ugh. She don't want to be out with you either. Will. I mean, Lamar. So Lamar tells her that he knows he's a challenge and I'm a challenge y'all. Uh, Koshia tells him that his conversations have been too much. And he was like too much. What? Oh, have been too soon. And he was like, too soon what? She was like, they're too risque. His response is, they're grown and people need to be more open. No, you need to grow the fuck up because you're childish. And the fact that you are not getting sex, that's all that's on your mind. It's not a matter of being grown. It's not a matter of being grown. Me and all my friends are grown AF. And we don't sit around and talk about sex as lewdly as he does. We have heard this man mention threesomes and talk about sex and how he wants to rub paint on these women and he wants to hear how they scream. Like, come on, come on. It's not a matter of being grown. Being grown is not feeling like you have to constantly talk about sex because what is, what is understood does not have to be said. So we understand that you don't get sex, but okay. Um, she tells him, you know, you're not ready to love. He said, cool beans, <laughs> cool beans. I said, all right. Um, so she was like, I wish you well in your journey. So then he was like, man, change your voice. And, you know, don't be talking to me like that. And I will admit I was on his side with that. She was being kind of condescending, whether she meant it or not. When you switch and you take that tone, because that is not the tone, that is not the voice that we hear Koshia speaking um, often, it did come across as condescending. So she stands up and she good for walking out, took the four little roses he brought and she left. He wants his flowers back. So he asks for the roses back and then proceeds to say that he's going to finish his food. This is his last supper. And he was going to eat her Brussels sprouts. And he puts his her plate in front of him and proceeds to eat. Next week is the pajama party. Good Lord, Tommy knew that we couldn't have had this pajama party until Lamar creepy ass left. So let me know what you guys thought about uh the episode if you haven't already subscribed to the channel thumbs up the video and i will catch you guys in the next one peace